Good programming in context. Functions and if. Okay, so I have two programs. One is called even.py, one is called even.sh, and I want to show you that they do the same thing. So I could run even.sh, and it's going to prompt me for an integer. Okay, and we find out that the number 5 is odd. I could run it again, enter negative 2, and negative 2 is even. Now, even.py will do the same thing. Can't have a Q. Uh, this one should be odd. It is. And this one should be even. And it is. Okay. So these two programs are performing exactly the same thing. Ask for a number. The user gives a number. The program returns whether that number is even or odd. What I want to do now is look at these two programs side by side. Okay, so on the left hand side you can see even.sh and on the right hand side you can see even.py so the bash script on the left hand side and the python script on the right hand side and you can tell this of course from the shebang at the top of each script so what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about how these scripts differ and then how they're similar so when we run these scripts, really the first line that we're running is the read line in the bash script and the input line in the Python script. Now even though there are differences syntactically, these two lines are doing the same thing, prompting the user to enter an integer. So read with the P flag gives the prompt, enter an integer, and loads it into a variable called i. So the value entered by the user is loaded into the variable i. The input function in Python does exactly the same thing. Input takes as its argument a string to prompt to the user. So we put a string between these parentheses. That's the argument. And then what the user inputs is stored in this variable, i. Now, what determines what happens next in each program is the control flow, which is implemented by if. And so we see we have an if else syntax in each of bash and python. Now first I want to explain what this operator does, the percent sign. The term for this is modulo, and modulo says let me take what's over here on the left hand side, divide it by what is over here on the right hand side and modulo will return the remainder of that division. So if I have 4 over here stored at i and I divide that by 2, well 2 divides evenly into 4 and so I'll have a remainder of 0. So 4 modulo 2 is 0. Likewise 4 modulo 3 well, 3 does not divide evenly into 4. 
and so that would give us a different modulo. The remainder there would be one. Well, so that's how modulo works. When reading code aloud, code that includes the modulo operator, it's often heard to be shortened to mod, so it would not be unusual to hear me say, for example, 4 mod 2, or 3 mod 2. Modulo of 2, so anything mod 2, has the side effect of splitting the results into a set of evens and a set of odds. Think about it. 4 mod 2, 2 divides evenly into 4, and the modulo is 0. The result is 0. 3 mod 2, 2 does not divide evenly into 3, and so 3 mod 2 is equal to 1. So an if statement is looking to see if a certain evaluation evaluates as true. So in this case, whether whatever value is stored at i divided by 2 gives a remainder of 0. If that statement does turn out to be true, that is, if i mod 2 is 0, or another way to think of it is, if i is even, then we will execute the code underneath if. Else, this is the code that is executed if this statement does not evaluate to true. That is, if i mod 2 evaluates to something other than 0. Definitely a 1. So, if 1 is evaluated here, then we will execute the code in else. Now, one last thing to notice about this block of code, well, <laughs> this block of code in Python, is that I did not just put i mod 2, I put int i mod 2. In other words, I had to cast i to an integer. Can you remember why I had to do this? I had to do it because this function input returns a string. So if the user inputs the integer 4, it does not assign a value of 4, a numeric value of 4, to i. Instead, a string value is assigned to i. So at this point, I'm casting that string value to an integer so that it can be evaluated with modulo. So let's just read through the code so far a little more fluently. So first, because we're starting from right here, we're going to prompt the user to enter an integer. we're going to store that integer at i. Then, we're going to ask the question, does i mod 2 evaluate to 0? If it does, we will call print even, passing i as an argument. And we'll talk about what that means in a second. If it does not, then we will call print odd with i as an argument. Even though the syntax is different, we're doing the same thing over here in bash. We're getting the user to assign a value to i, and then we are evaluating whether i mod 2 is equal to 0. The square bracket says, find out if what's in here is true. The dollar sign, double parentheses, says, do some integer evaluation inside of these parentheses. 
In this case, we're expanding the value stored at i using the dollar sign curly brace syntax mod 2 and then this expression gives us a value to compare with 0. Specifically, whether or not that value is equal to 0, specified by eq for equal. If this evaluates to true, then call print even, passing the value stored at i as an argument. If it does not evaluate to true, call print odd with the value stored at i as an argument, and then bash requires phi to end the if.